to work up. In this video, I'm going to be building together my temporary PC. Now I Now I say temporary PC because all these parts and a little bit more were supposed to go into my Z390 MSI motherboard. But because I've been having trouble with that motherboard, just factory issues and, you know, warranty claims because I had to send it back two times. I've decided to get a temporary uh, motherboard just so that I could still use all this awesome hardware while I wait for the motherboard to come back. Without further ado, let's get into the build and um, I'll show you guys what I'm going to put in this PC. So just to break it down briefly for you, as you can see here, we've got 850 watts of power. We've got a, a G400 Great War CPU cooler. We've got five RGB uh, fans that run off Molex alone. We've got the i9-9900K Intel 9th Gen CPU. We've got the Gigabyte B365MH 9th Gen motherboard. We've got the G-Skill 3200 MHz 16 gigabyte RAM two of them so we have 32 gig all together and we have the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti by iGame 11 gigabytes just a couple of little mods that I put together for this build so that I could make everything run sufficiently and efficiently I've got this fan hub and RGB hub it's a two-in-one so it's got eight ports for the five volt three pin RGBs and it's also got the eight ports for the four pin fan cables whether it be for your CPU or just your fan and then here I've also got this RGB graphics card cable it's got two lots of eight pins because my power supply runs off a six pin and an eight pin I had to get a adapter that goes from six pin to eight pin there are many ways you can make that work because this graphics card takes two eight pin plugs you got to make sure that you have two eight pin graphics cables now this is a two eight pin graphics card cable but the cable that runs off my power supply is only a six pin and an eight pin therefore I had to get an adapter which is this thing here which goes from six pin and then it turns into an eight pin so that's how I managed to get this to work with this RGB cable this also has a manual controller on it and it runs just simply off a Molex plug as well and of course I've also got the nvidia geforce custom graphics display bar basically acts like a support so it helps to lift your graphics card level if you have a graphics card that is longer than say 290 millimeters or 310 millimeters it kind of flops down right at the very end we use something like this in order to help support it and keep it level and also i've got this cheap 69 dollars shipped to my door mid-sized tower pc case it's a fully tempered glass one so it's only got one side panel the rest is just basically tempered glass i truly believe that you can get these cheap cases that will definitely do the job and give you a look that is just as good as any other pc case that you can buy in the end it's all about what you put in your PC and how you go about modifying it to make it look good. I'm going to show you guys that this cheap little PC case is going to look just as good, in my personal opinion, as any other case out there. The first thing I'm going to do, as always, is start off with the motherboard, install the CPU, the fan cooler, and also the RAM, and then we'll get into the PC case. Okay, so here we have the Gigabyte B365MH motherboard. We'll just take it out. When it comes to building your motherboard, you want to make sure that you have a solid base. The last thing you want is to get any flex in your motherboard because you just may warp it or crack it. We're going to install our SSD. This is a Kingston. It's a 500 gigabyte SSD, NVMe. It's going to run basically our operating system and uh, any other software that we want to install. Most M2 drives will install with a screw, but for this one, it's just simply a, a clip-in plastic tab. So you just push it in and it clips into place like so. Next thing we're going to do is install our RAM. And now for our beautiful 
i9-9900 CPU. Now we always look for the triangle where the triangle is and we install the CPU so that the triangle lines up. One of the main reasons why I like the Intel CPUs is because the CPU doesn't have the pins on it. The pins is on the actual motherboard itself. So, you know, you don't have to worry about bending the pins on the CPU itself. AMDs, I've noticed they have the pins on the CPU. Okay, so we'll line it up. Don't drop it in really hard, guys. You want to make sure you line it up nice and straight. We've got our triangle lining up. We install the CPU. This is an M80X board. It's a very small board. It's only got the 1x16 slot and it's also got 1x1 PCIe slot. And it's a very basic board. What we're going to do is install our fan cooler. We'll grab our Great War G400. We will install our mount for the fan. We have four holes. We need to line this up and push it in. Clamp it down with these. This mount is for two different types of boards, 775 and 1150s. Make sure you install it in the right socket. There are two slots where the pins can go in. The 775 will go on the lower slot and the 1150s will go on the top slot. That's in. So now we need to apply some thermal paste. I have a little tub here of thermal paste. So all I'm going to do is suck some into this and then we'll apply it directly in the center because that's how I like to apply my thermal paste. Just one dollop right in the center. And that's all you need. Just enough to cover your CPU. Now we will install our fan cooler. This can only go on one way as you can see. You cannot install it this way because the RAM is in the way. So obviously it will install this way. You just push it down and then this clips onto it. We'll clip down this side first. There we go. And then we'll clip down this side. There we go. That's everything we need for the motherboard. We'll jump to the case. Next we're going to take apart our PC case and begin to install the fans. If I do the fans after they install the motherboard, it's just going to be hard to install the fans. So I'm going to install the fans first. So there are four thumb screws that you need to remove. I've already removed two, so I'll just remove these two. And this temper glass comes off. Might as well take off this magnetic mat on top. And the front just comes off. And now we'll pull off the other side case. There's two thumb screws on the back you need to remove. One, and there's another one down the bottom. We're going to install all our fans now. We're going to put two on the front. Two up top and one at the back. We want our air to blow, so all our fans need to blow air in this direction. And the top, it needs to blow down as well. First, we'll install our front fans, so we have room to put two here. I'm going to install my fans like this. That way, my cables can come out through this panel, through the side here. You really should take note of the direction in which your fan blows air. If it's not flowing the right way, then it's not going to give it the maximum amount of cooling. Last screw for this fan. We'll go into the same slot here. We'll install our fan like so. This is pretty straightforward. You're just installing all the fans. Okay, so two fans installed. Now we're going to install our top fans. Okay, so here I'm just tightening the two fans up the top. I figured you kind of get the idea of how to tighten these anyway and how to install them. It really isn't hard. You just put the fans in and then you tighten the screws. Here I'm just tightening these screws now. I've already installed them. I'm just tightening them down. And then of course you install your rear fan as well. Okay, and next we're going to install this rear back panel. First I'll release it and I'll show you guys how to install it. All you do is line it up and you notice these grooves here this lip, you have to line it up with this part here. You just have to push it in until it clips into place. Make sure that the writing is the right way up. And then you just push it in and it will clip into place. Now you gotta make sure that it does clip into place. So it has to clip. And then we grab our motherboard and we simply just line it up so it lines up with our back panel as well. And also make sure your motherboard stands are installed and just line up your screws and your back panel. And now we can simply install our screws. It's one, two, 
as you can see here i'm just starting them off i haven't tightened them down completely because you want to make sure that everything lines up first before you begin to tighten down all your screws because sometimes you'll have the issue where one of your screws won't line up and then you have to undo them so that you can line up your last screw so it's easy if you just start them off once they've all been started then you can just tighten them down now that they're all lined up i can tighten them all down now okay so now with our motherboard securely in we're going to install our hard drives because our hard drives aren't the ones that have a bracket that slide in these ones screw in i'm going to screw the hard drive in it will take four screws and they will give you the screws that come with the pc case they simply slide in like so and then screw it in place the reason why i install my hard drive now is because as you can see on the right here that's where the power supply sits in so if i install my power supply it will be really hard for me to get to the hard drive screws and screw them in so that's why i'm going to install them now okay so that's done with the hard drive securely in we can now grab our power supply it just slides in like this and then we install our four screws that hold the power supply in place so i'm just going to start them off here on the side and then I'll turn it around and tighten them so you can see. Tighten all four of them and that will be that. Now not too tight guys, just tight enough so that it holds it steady in place. Alrighty, so now that the power supplies in, our hard drives in, now we can begin to route our cables. Now, I always like to separate the main cables first, which are the 24-pin ATX, the graphics card, and the CPU. So first, we'll just tuck in our CPU cable in the top slot, where it's going to plug into the CPU power slot. And then, we'll route our graphics card cable and our ATX 24-pin. So that's going to plug into this spot right here. So that's why I've routed the ATX cable there. We'll just plug in our ATX first. So that just plugs in like so. Next we have our CPU cable. Okay, so it kind of looks like I've jinxed myself a little bit here. I'm having trouble with the CPU cable. So what I'm going to have to do is remove the fan that is closest to the CPU port. And then I'll plug in the CPU cable and reinstall the fan. So here I'm just going to quickly remove the top fan here and I'll plug in my CPU cable and we'll be good. With the fan removed, as you can see, I can now get my, to the CPU port. I'll just plug this in quickly. CPU cable plugged in. Now we'll reinstall our fan. With the fan reinstalled, now we can work on the cables for our front panel. For our front panel, you just have a look at where everything lines up. So which way your power cables go and uh, where your USB cables go. And then basically look for the slot that guides that cable closest to the motherboard headers. So I'm going to run my USB and my audio cable first. I'll just tuck them in this first slot here and then they will just plug into the headers that they belong to. Now we'll just run the rest of our IO cables. So we have our power switch, our HDD LEDs, our power LED, and our reset switch so we'll just put them together and push them through the same opening as they will plug into the bottom right of the motherboard so we'll plug in our usb 3.0 first we'll just run our usb 3.0 cable and that will plug straight into there
I'm just going to plug in my audio plug and then I'm just going to plug in my USB make sure that they are lined up correctly after all they only have nine pins so there's always a pin missing make sure that you line it up properly okay and now we have our cables for our front panel so as you can see right here this motherboard well you probably can't see careful you can't see properly but this motherboard has the labels for you already just under the headers for our front panel so all we have to do is follow the labels and plug in our front power cables so we'll plug in our reset switch our hdd led our power led and our power switch and that's it that is our front panel cables all plugged in and of course our usb 3.0 and next, we're going to install our graphics card. This iGame GTX 1080 Ti comes with a pair of gloves. And that's really cool because the pair of gloves will help you from getting any kind of oil stains or any type of contaminants on your hand all over your graphics card. So we'll just have to line up our graphics card, make sure that it's seated correctly, and then push it down until it clicks into place. And then next we'll install the two screws that hold our graphics card in place. So here's our GPU cable, our um, RGB GPU cables. Plug them into the graphics card first. We'll push them where they need to go and then we'll plug them into the cable for our graphics card. So I'm going to curve them down and um, have them curl up towards the open slot. And you see this opening right here? That's where the graphics card cable is going to come through so that I can plug it into the RGB cables. I'm just going to pull it through and now I'm going to plug them into the RGB cables. Okay, so I'm only going to have the RGB cable showing, so I'm going to pull back the graphics card cable a little bit further back. That way it is not exposed in the PC case because we only want to have the RGB cable showing. That way it looks a lot nicer and less messier with every other cable showing. I'm just going to plug in all my fans together just to get ready to plug them into a Molex power supply. and run them off that molex cable all we have left are the sata cables and the molex cables i'll just tidy up my rgb graphics card cable real quick now i have zip ties on here at the moment because i wanted the, the cables to stay together but i'm going to cut them off later on once i have everything sorted and in the right place Okay, so now just to figure out how I'm going to plug in my CPU fan. Down the bottom I have my controller for the RGB GPU cable and the fan has a SATA cable and also a standard 4 pin fan cable. So I'm going to need to use a SATA cable in order to plug my CPU fan into it and also plug the fan cable into the CPU fan header and that will run the fan alone. The SATA cable will control the RGBs on the fan cooler. And so in order to do this, plug all my cables in and have it nice and tidy, I've got this hub here that I spoke about at the beginning. This is a 16 port fan hub. It has eight ports for the 5 volt RGB and it also has 8 ports for the 4 pin fan cables. Okay so now just finishing tidying up a little bit of the cables so as you can see here we've installed the graphics card holder we call it a holder because it kind of helps to hold up the graphics card and I've just tidied up all the cables plugged in my uh, fan hub with the 5 volt 3 pin hub as well the 2 in 1 like I told you about and now we're going to install our side cover back on. Oh, that looks pretty good. It will stay put. 
cover should go on pretty well and uh, not expose anything at all. All right, here we go. Side cover. There we go. Perfect. Now we'll put in our thumb screws to hold in the side cover. Reassemble everything. Perfect. Put back our front panel. These side panels, they have gaps as well so that air can flow through. We'll now reinstall our tempered glass. There we go. Reinstall our screws for the tempered glass. Haven't peeled off the uh, plastic yet because uh, just in case I accidentally scratch it, we don't want to do that. So I've just left it on for now while we test everything. For a cheap $69 case, I really do think that it does the job. I mean, it looks pretty good, honestly, in my opinion. That looks pretty good to me. We'll uh, give it a test and we'll see how it goes.